Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. In 2011, researchers from the University of Colorado and Kansas State University were awarded a grant for more than $850,000 to study the impacts of climate change on prairie dogs in the Boulder area. This grant was awarded by the Division of Environmental Biology at the National Science Foundation. I lived in Boulder on and off for 25 years and I was fascinated by this grant. How do you study the impacts of climate change in an area where the climate is not changing? There's been no trend in Boulder temperatures since 1950 and their hottest weather occurred in 1954. Boulder hasn't reached 100 degrees since 2012, but in 1954 they reached 104 degrees and had several days over 100. There's been no trend in Boulder precipitation since 1950, and other than a large rainfall event in 2013, there hasn't been anything unusual going on. Same story with snow. There hasn't been any trend in Boulder snowfall. The National Science Foundation gave away almost $1 million of taxpayers' money without doing any due diligence to see if the study made any sense. This is a search for prairie dog in my Google Photos album. Last time I lived in Boulder, I bicycle commuted to Louisville, Colorado, and went past many prairie dog towns. Prairie dog populations are all over the place, and they are extremely healthy. I could have done the study for the National Science Foundation in about five minutes, and I could have done it for free. There's one picture from the Google search of my album which particularly amused me. This is two of our puppies, Toki and Upla. We do live out on the prairie in Wyoming, so perhaps prairie dog is an accurate description. The real threat to wildlife habitat around Boulder is the University of Colorado itself. They want to develop this wetland in South Boulder, which is the last remaining open space between Boulder and Denver Metropolitan. When I lived in Boulder, I was very active with this group, Save South Boulder, attempting to protect wildlife habitat from the university. I've obtained money from venture capitalists on a couple of occasions, and there's a huge process of due diligence you have to go through before you can get it. By contrast, the National Science Foundation doesn't seem to do any due diligence, which isn't surprising because it's not their money they're spending. They're spending your money on these sorts of scientific scams. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on junk climate science for more than 15 years. You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.